censored by aloe vera. Welcome to my channel, I'm Mint. And a while ago, I made this hat. Yeah, all the way. And I love how it turned out. And a lot of people asked how I made it, and it was really fun. So I decided to put together another whole hat and make a tutorial on how I did it. Bonus, now I have two hats. Some Joanne's vlogging to grab the materials we'll need. Yes. It's pumpkin time. It's pumpkins. Autumn. Summer. Autumn. Summer. Autumn. 41 pieces? In one kit? Oh, they're counting every single rubber band as a piece. This is probably the hardest to find or most specific material we'll need, just some kind of fabric stiffener to make the curly shape at the petals. All right. Let's get down to talking about making our pattern. You'll need two measurements, across the head and how long you want each petal to be. Okay, the measurement of where a hat would sit comfortably on my forehead was 22 and a half inches. But if you plan on wearing this hat with a wig, add an inch because a wig will add a lot of bulk to your head and it will be too tight on your regular head. Then however many petals you want, I made this little hat with seven petals. So I divided the measurement that I had by seven and I got 3.2 inches. And then when I went to make a pattern, I added one more inch to that just for seams, shape allowance, um, better too big than too small. The other measurement you'll need is how long you want each petal to be when you're actually making the hat. You'll need to make the petals longer than just from the top of your head or the top of where you want your hat to be to that line of where the hat will sit. The purple is what you'll add on one side. So the, the widest part of each petal is the measurement for your head. And then you can make the excess at the edge side Whatever fun petal shape you want, you can go wild. A good way to test is to make them out of paper. You could make little models and see how they look all in a flower. You could draw inspiration from a real flower that's actually in your garden. And then you'll need to make the whole thing symmetrical like this. But the easiest way to do that drafting a pattern is probably just to cut physical paper in half. There's my pattern. This hat is going to be a little smaller than the blue one I made. Obviously, next step is to cut out however many petals you'll need. This is why this is a good craft for um, budget-friendly materials. I'm just going to use acrylic paint to color the petals on this flower. I want to make one with wool and dye, I'll do it eventually, but for these first two, acrylic paint is just fine. It's really satisfying to make a gradient along the edge of the flower from one color to the next. This color shift has this really nice marigold to mango to yellow. This is drying, we will make the calyx at the top. I'm using green wool roving for this. If you haven't ever used needle felting wool before, Etsy is a great place to source it. This is floral wire that I use to make the stem of each hat. I'm double wrapping it for strength. Now I'm going to mix a few different shades. I'm mixing them just by pulling them and kind of combing the fibers together. The great thing about it is that we're going to reshape it all together so the colors will be beautifully blended but still keep some of that natural variation. I'm not over mixing it to look completely blended in. The short pieces of wool roving, I'll just corkscrew wrap around the floral wire, and then I'm 
needle felting it in place and the hooks in the needle tangle the wool enough so that it will stay where it's poked. More poking, more tangling, a sturdier, firmer project. Now this is all done and together you can see how the wire really bends and curls easily and I can change it however I need to. And I'll make the calyx. I'm forming this mostly the same way. Grab a tuft of roving, shape and stab and shape and stab. It's a lot of poking and tangling the wool until it's the shape that I want it to be. I've sped this up because it would be really boring to watch this real time. I'm using five little pieces. Color variation you're seeing there is where I used one shade of green um, a little more thickly just to bulk up each shape. Our petals are dry and ready to pin into the shape of the flower. I'm just going to pin along each side all the way around. There are seven petals in total on this flower. For the, oh, oh, you know what? For this one, I'm doing wrong sides together, insides together. This uh, does have visible seams just because I like the way they look in the finished product. Usually when you're sewing, you would do right sides together. I've pinned everything here wrong side together. And this is a really good stage to get a general idea of the size and shape and overall look that your hat will be. You can make adjustments if you need to. You can add petals, you can remove them. Um, you can change the shape of the tips. <gasps> Anything goes at this point. Oh yeah, that was when I was talking about the seams on the outside. And sewing them is next. Um, it's really hard for me to hold my camera and so don't cringe at me if this is super weird footage. I'm just sewing along all of the shapes we penned. It is really weird and bulky right there at the sewing machine. And now I'm going to trim off all of the loose threads and I'll trim as close to the seam as I can get. I don't want a bulky seam allowance. I'm trimming it right up to where I think that it will be most secure. And aren't my scissors cute? My scissors are a unicorn that is magicking away that extra seam to leave it nice and flush and beautiful. Um, uh, the raw felt color that's revealed by the seams when you trim them, I just put a really quick bit of extra orange paint on those seams just so they match the rest of the petal instead of just instead of standing out a lot as unpainted regular felt. To shape the hat, this is probably the most experimental part of this. Um, I just used a bucket. I used a bucket and I used this stiffener stuff that we bought back at Joann's. I mixed it with water. Not all stiffeners will need that, but this one works really well that way. And now I'm painting it on every single petal, rotating it as I go, and curling them with my hands to get them the shape I want. There's the inside so far. Here's what the inside looks like. Just kind of shape these. Mm -mm, it's wet. Oh, well hi. I'll go all the way around every single petal and, oh, bird spotted. Now I'm using this larger bucket to kind of, just to hold and make sure that the petals actually dry, bent and curled instead of relaxing on their own. All right, it's raining this morning, so I'm glad I pulled it out of the door. We'll pull it out. That's pretty cute. That's pretty cute. I decided to make a little leaf to go up by the calyx and I just felt it together, a quick flat leaf, and decided to add these details on my sewing machine. It was a million threads to trim afterwards, but I think the leaf did turn out really cute and it's a nice detail. Now let's put together all of the pieces into the final hat. This white stuff is core roving. It's a kind of wool roving that's just thicker and sturdier, and I'm going to use it to anchor the stem. I've 
I attached a bunch of it to the base of the stem and then I put the stem through the hole. I'm so sorry this is mostly off camera. I set up my tripod while I did this and then um, you get mostly cat footage instead of what I'm needling in place. I'm adding a little roving to cover any gaps and felting a lot of it in there. I'm really, really taking my time to needle felt it all down and make sure it's sturdy. The more tangled that wool is, the longer this will last all together. And now finally, I am adding that little leaf. I'm working hard to needle it all together to make it fit as snugly and firmly as possible. I originally made the leaf for the other hat, so the colors of green, you probably notice, match this hat better. But, um, I think it's so cute here. And then it's all finished. So here it is all together. I didn't really have a flower in mind making this. I thought sunflower shaped petals and then a whichever little heart shaped leaf. And I think it doesn't really matter because people know what it is. It looks kind of pumpkin-y when I look at it now. It's kind of... Maybe it's this shade of green with this bright orange. It looks pumpkin-y to me. It's very cute. And I love the way you can curl and adjust this however you please. I might re-stiffen the petals a little bit just for weather durability, but I think this turned out very, very, very cute, and I like the seven petal pattern. As always, if you'd like to support the content I make, the best way to do so is to donate to my Kofi right here. Thanks for watching, and as always, ta! Till next time!